Got my badge. Got my new license plate. Got my bottle of Empathy wine. Talk about that. Got the questions from ClarityCon 2019 that happened yesterday. And it looks like we're ready to start the podcast. Welcome to episode 65. We're still alive at the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host today. And today we're talking about a little thing called empathy. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. So um, today, the topic for today, I guess empathy is kind of the topic, but we had an event yesterday uh, called Clarity Con Automotive. It's an event that I've been dreaming up for the last two years. And last year when my first company was acquired, you know, we decided that we were going to maybe revisit the event idea. And, you know, initially the advice was let's let's make it two years out. My gut was telling me I needed to have it sooner. So we had the event, Clarity Con Automotive, yesterday, May 8th, 2019, and it was a raging success. And it feels so good to be on the other side of it. You've seen the episodes where I've gone through my my event badges over the last two years. I've been going to events learning. Um about the auto industry and the intricacies of it and also experiencing a lot of different events. And, and there was, I have an episode a couple back, I can't remember which episode it was, where I literally just went through all the badges and told stories about how it takes so long to get to, to, to learn anything. It takes so long to make progress. People that say, I want to establish myself as a thought leader. Well, guess what? It takes time to become someone who has enough insight to maybe, maybe, I submit this, introduce a new thought, therefore being a thought leader, right? You first want to introduce some new thinking. And so this badge, specifically, this badge is the most meaningful badge that I have now because, it, because it's from an event that my team and I put on and brought value through an event to a bunch of other people and the sponsors. And frankly, I think it's the coolest badge I have just because we care about those details. We actually had somebody say to us, this is the coolest event badge I've ever gotten, which made Patrick super happy because he picked uh, the stock and the laminate and the team did a great job on the design. So the first half of the event was really geared toward the people side of business and people strategy and organizational management. Uh, you know, you're getting all this new thinking at an event and how do you actually get traction on some of these new ideas? And then at the end of the first session, so after the first three keynotes, we had a fireside chat in which we let people ask questions and we used an app to ask the questions. And so I have a list of the questions that came up and it became apparent really quick that since this was an anonymous question submitting app, like people could submit their questions anonymously. So I think just naturally people were more willing to ask questions that they wouldn't ask if they had to stand up and hold a microphone because maybe they're a little personal or maybe they're actually sitting with the person that you know they, they have a question about or a situation and they want to keep it a little more discreet. So the questions that came up were very much on a relational basis, and they spanned out from there along topics that had to do with person-to-person -person interactions, wanting to make a connection between one person and another, wanting to deal with a broken connection between one person and another, wanting to figure out how to brand market and connect from one person to another, because that's what brand marketing is. It is connection. So I don't know that they made that parallel, but that's the parallel that I make. That's the parallel that we make as an agency at Congruent. Brand connection, connection, connection happens between two people. So the word empathy was really coming up a lot. And I'm going to get into some of these questions so I can share them and then share some of the answers that were given and some of the insight that that I added to the conversation. Um, First, I thought it was pretty ironic that I got back and um, I received a gift box from Gary Vaynerchuk and uh, the team at Vayner, a gift of some of his uh, new wine collection that he released. And it is called, as you can see here, if you're watching, it's Empathy Wines. Empathy is the name of the wine company. So I thought I'd, first of all, thank you, Gary. Thank you, team, for the wine. Looking forward to trying it. Great packaging, by the way. If you go to Empathy Wines, um, amazing packaging if you want to give a gift box or get something nice super great job but also the theme of empathy uh 
is what I want to talk about today. So let's talk about some of the questions because it is not easy to work in an environment with other people. We're all in that boat, right? It's not easy to live in relationship. It is not easy to figure out why someone would connect with somebody or why they're pushing away, right? And that is all an exercise in understanding what their position is, understanding why they're taking in the information the way they are, understanding what they might be feeling given their own situation. And then we deploy what we call empathy to that so that now we know how to communicate. So let's talk about some, some of the questions. So most people don't know this. The auto industry, $1.2 trillion, the next largest industry. I think it's consumer goods, maybe eight hundred billion. So automotive is far bigger than the largest, and so it's an industry that is obviously very slow to change because it's a gigantic ship. Big ships they turn slowly. Big ship, so you have a lot of space in the season for the old guard and the new guard, and there's a lot of conflict going on because of that. So somebody asked anonymously, "How do you get a general manager to understand the importance of welcoming change?" and loosening their grip on the old model. And I, I assume that this question was coming from an owner or a dealer principal trying to bring this person along. And I think most businesses have had this situation sometime in their life cycle. I know that over the last 16 years of building my businesses, I've had this come up a lot of times because what happens in a business that grows and progresses over time is that the people that got you to where you are now may not be able to change and adapt enough to get you where you need to go to continue to thrive and be successful and keep your doors open in the future. And so those decisions and those conversations are really hard for me to have personally because, and I think a lot of business owners, people have come forward because the person that got you there may not be the person that can get you to the next step, or they might not just be willing to change. They may feel entitled or they may be scared. They may just not understand or have the skill set. So when the question is asked, how do you transition someone who is old school to a new school way of doing things? The answer is really first, the chances are that you know this person very well. You know their mannerisms, you know their propensities, you know their disposition, you know their desire to change or their resistance to change. You know that from their behavior in your company, you know that from the rest of their life, like you know this person already. And so the first thing that I suggest is like, you need to do a serious gut check and say, do I believe really, truly, in my heart of hearts, do I believe that that person can change? and will be willing to change. And if the answer is no, then you need to be willing to have a tough conversation. And I'm not saying you have to drop the ax, but you have to give that person opportunities to change and grow. And if the resistance continues to come, I suggest the con conversation goes like this. And I have not always done this well, and I have learned through hard situations maybe how to do it a little better next time. Hey, we're in a big transition right now and obviously you feel it. I guarantee you that person feels it. Obviously you feel it. And in my best reasoning and thinking, I know that for us to be to continue to be successful as a business, we need to up our game to this. We need to change and pivot. Now you have been here for a long time. You've been loyal, you've worked hard, and I appreciate that so much, which is why I want to see you change and transition with us. I don't want to leave you behind, but I need you to be willing to change with me. And if you are, and if you do, I'll do everything I can to help you change. I'll give you every resource you need. And if you're not willing to change, then this just isn't the place for you. One of our speakers at the event, Adam Robinson, really put a great nuance on this. And he just said, you know, this just isn't the, you just can't work here if you're not willing to do what we're doing. And then you put it on them. And then you say, you need to make the decision and you need to choose. And if you get to that point, I suggest what you do then is put in some firm agreements. So there's no expectations on either side, but you say, look, if, if you're willing to stay, here's what that means to do this. So how do you convince them? I don't think you can convince, look, as the leader, your job is to lead. Your job is to give vision and motivation. Any leader's job is to provide vision and motivation. 
to the people that follow them. And aside from everything else and comp plans and work schedules, all of that, th throw that all aside for a second. If you can provide vision and motivation, guess what? Your people will move forward and they will grow. Your organization will grow and you will be more successful. If the leader cannot or does not try or does not make it the center point of his role to provide vision and motivation, well, then that leader is not going to be as effective. If someone doesn't care about vision and motivation as a leader, well, the only weapon you have in that point is a whip to crack. It's the only weapon you have if you cannot provide vision or motivation. So it is your job to lead that person that doesn't want to change and try to provide them the vision of why they need to change and what the future looks like if they change and then motivate them to make the change. And if that can't happen, you've exhausted all that, and guess what? That person just doesn't want to change. They don't understand why they should change. They might understand why you want to change, but no one is going to line up behind you unless they understand why they should change. So that was a question that came up. And then the funny thing that happened after that is someone clarified the question, whoever asked it. So we, we craft this answer and we're like, great. Fireside chat goes, awesome answer. And then the person says, oh, here it is. It says, the general manager question actually came from a lower manager, not an owner. And he asks, am I working for the right company, but the wrong GM? How do you approach it without being viewed as insubordination? That's a complicated question too, but it starts with empathy. Why does the general manager ahead of you not want to change? And also thinking about what the owner might think about this situation, because are you working for the wrong manager or the wrong company? Well, I don't know, but the owner put that general manager in charge. And I would, I would surmise if the general manager is resistant to change and the owner's allowing him to be resistant to change and the owner is also not committed to the change. So my ex answer to that would be you're probably working for the wrong company and you can do one of two things. Number one, sit down with the general manager and the owner at the same time so everybody's in the room, no insubordination there. It's just an open conversation. And if they're not open to an open conversation, then I promise you, you're working for the wrong company if you care about that type of thing. Let's look at another question. This is from uh, a business leader looking to get good hires. And they say, how do I know if I'm getting the best hire over versus a leftover that other industries don't want? How do you know? You don't know. You don't know. But the point of recruiting is so you can have empathy for the people that you really want and be able to communicate with them in a way where they see your opportunity, your job as aligned with, they, with what they want and what they value in life. That's empathy. So how do you know? You never know. Oh, is there somebody out there that's better? I don't know. You won't know. You will never know unless you can interview everyone that's available to look, everyone that wants a new job. If you can do that, then maybe you can decide, but that would be way too time consuming and you wouldn't, still wouldn't really know. So the point of that is, if you want to recruit better, then you need to have empathy and understand what the type of people that you want to hire really value and really want. And if you can connect those dots because you are empathetic to them, then guess what? You will get hires that you're happy with. I've saw this before. So the large corporate company, longstanding company is like, we want to hire millennials and we're going to make these job testimonials about these people that have been in our company for 20, 25 years. They love it so much they work here, so we're going to show them. I'm like, that's great, except for the value proposition of a millennial looking for a job when they're 25 has nothing to do with the dude who's 50, who's got his eye on retirement, and took a job in a different era for different reasons. It is not the same reason the millennial is going to take this job. No empathy. So does it make you feel good? Does it boost your ego as a company? Does it make the guy who did the testimonial feel good? That's great. He's been there for so long. That's great. But guess what? It doesn't matter at all to the millennial. If anything, it might even push them away. But like, I don't know. I'm not even considering what my life looks like at 50. I don't care. I care why it matters to me and why it makes my life better today and why this will be the right position. Bottom line, it takes a lot of work to work together with other people. It takes a lot of work to provide vision and motivation for the people that follow you or the people that are in a growing organization. It takes a lot of work and intentionality to transition someone who did it one way to doing it a new way. The center point of the work, empathy, emotional intelligence. The fact that so many people 
had questions and concerns around emotional intelligence and interpersonal connection. It did surprise me because it was more of like a professional conversation. We're talking about operations and details. But as I thought about it, it doesn't surprise me because these are the situations that we as humans and people try to figure out on our own and do our best and don't understand why other people got offended or hurt or left or got angry. We don't understand. It's because we don't talk about it enough. So I'm thinking about maybe having a, a separate podcast or at least an opportunity for us to have some conversation around those things. If you're watching or you're listening to this and you have a situation you're in and a question, please shoot it through. Shoot me an email, respond on one of the posts, and we'll get the questions answered. We'll start to build them up and we'll try to answer the questions because that's what people have done in my life. I've learned from watching and learning from other people's insight and experience. I can tell you that I've done a zillion things wrong, offended a ton of people, have a lot of hurt feelings, lost friendships because I didn't know the best way to handle it. And those things just tend to compound over time and you can make a mess of everything real quick. It would make me really happy if I could help some of you push through some of that situations to a positive end and grow and learn about them myself. The bottom line is unless you have empathy, you cannot have, I'm gonna hold this up, you cannot have clarity without empathy. Just had to show off the new license plate. If you're just listening instead of watching, I got new New York license plates and they say clarity. I'm super excited to put them on my car because I'm a dork like that. But I do stuff like that. The stickers on this window, this, the, the flag on my hat, the license plate. These are all reminders that help me keep priorities. Priorities. Speaking of priorities, thank you. It's my priority to thank you for being part of this community, watching, listening. For those of you who came out to ClarityCon yesterday, oh my gosh, I owe you a debt of gratitude. We had so much great feedback. Next week, we're going to feature all the cool stuff of ClarityCon. We also have a sweet ClarityCon playlist uh, from all the music that we're playing at the event. So if you were there and you want to listen to some of that again, we're going to link up the playlist below. If you weren't at the event and you want to still jam the playlist, check it out. It's on Spotify. Um, and let's just keep marching on together. I mentioned this last week. If you have feedback on this podcast show, you want to start a conversation. If you have some of those questions, please submit them on Twitter at Paul the Daily. We'll interact over it there. Also making content on Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn. So connect on the platform that's easiest for you and tell your friends if you found value in the a podcast or the show in any way, please share it with them. Let's bring more people into this community so we can continue to move forward together. As far as that, episode 65, still alive in the can. I hope you have a fantastic week as you pursue clarity and as you grow in your empathy. That's it. 65, we're out. <laughs>